It's a moment medical students always remember, the first time they came face to face with a dead body. Of course, it's um, humbling when you see a body in front of you um, because this was a person like they had a whole life, hopes, dreams. Janet Adeboye is a fifth year student at the Cleveland Clinic Lerner College of Medicine. She sees cadavers as an integral part of her medical training. Something that's nice about traditional cadavers is that you can actually like touch it and see how it would feel. Um, if you want to go into like a surgical uh, career, um, it's important to really know the anatomy, like put your hands into it because that's, that's what you'll be doing. That's what a hernia is. So you might be wondering what Ataboye is doing here. Oh, wow. <laughs> the joysticks and headsets more common inside a gaming room, not a classroom. Sort of opening up a new computer or something like a little overwhelming. You want to figure out how all the buttons work. Here at this new education campus, Ataboye is one of the first students viewing cadavers in a whole new light. <laughs> no, absolutely. Like, you can see it right there. This is a 3D twist on getting up close and personal with patients. So we see here the large bone is the pelvis, this thing in the middle of the pelvis, that's the coccyx. In this virtual world, Ataboye can dissect parts of the body, then put them together, rotate them, and zoom in. All impossible on a real cadaver. The technology relies on a virtual library of detailed images of the human anatomy. The pelvis might be like the most difficult um, anatomy to see. Um, so it's nice that you can just like look right into it. Another advantage, the ability for anyone around the world to participate. Hey guys, go ahead and teleport to different positions so that she can see it from her perspective. Corey Heisenrader is president of Zygote Medical Education, which partnered with the Cleveland Clinic. I can bring in students from anywhere around the world, right? And we do this right now, um, from Abu Dhabi, to London, to Hong Kong. We are delivering these labs to hospitals all over China. Uh, they have challenges right now with aging patients, right? Um, and then also with uh, a deficiency in, in healthcare professionals, a demand of nurses and, and doctors, right? So they are in great need of technology like this. It's like a jigsaw puzzle with Legos. Dr. Neil Mehta is the Cleveland Clinic Lerner College of Medicine's Associate Dean for Curriculum. Meta sees huge potential for the program. For instance, one common problem for medical schools, cadavers are in short supply. There's the question of logistics of getting cadavers, having patients donate them, uh, keeping it, having enough cadavers to meet the needs of so many students. Um, it's just a huge task for any uh, school or a country that is not well resourced to continue to do this. Then there's the cost. Meta estimates the price tag to build a traditional cadaver-based anatomy lab would have been about $20 million. The VR curriculum costs a fraction of that, with the main expenses being the VR equipment and hardware. Each school's investment would be minimal, if any. You can really manipulate whatever you want. Cleveland Clinic isn't the only medical school looking for ways to advance its programs. Rutgers University in New Jersey has integrated virtual dissection tables based on body scans of real patients. When you take the fear of making a mistake out of the learning process, then the chances are good that they'll spend more time and it makes them more likely to explore, more likely to, to take chances. Doctors are quick to point out that VR's role should be to complement traditional cadavers, not completely replace them. The aim is to strike a balance between tradition and technology, providing aspiring doctors with another tool to help save lives. We are always learning from our patients, and that message starts that day one. Francis Coe, CGTN, Cleveland, Ohio.